If you drive an electric vehicle in the US today, chances are it has an energy-dense NMC lithium-ion battery. But there's another chemistry out there that offers some big advantages. We'll explore the ins and outs of LFP next on this episode of EV Basics. There are numerous lithium ion battery chemistries out there, but in the automotive world, you really only need to know about two, at least for right now. There's NMC, sometimes called NCM, which stands for nickel manganese cobalt, though there's a whole range of nickel rich battery chemistries. To keep things simple though, I'm just gonna say NMC. Now the second major battery chemistry for electric vehicles is LFP, short for lithium ferrophosphate or lithium iron phosphate if you prefer. Now we'll discuss why you should care and why you might want to shop for one over the other, but first, some background info. Now, the former option, NMC, dominates here in the United States, but the latter, LFP, currently plays a big role in the Chinese automotive market and is growing, for good reason, or rather reasons, which we'll get to here in just a minute. According to the International Energy Agency, 95% of LFP batteries for light duty vehicles were installed in models produced in China. BYD accounted for a whopping 50% of that number and Tesla 15%. Of all the Musk mobiles fitted with LFP batteries, roughly 85% of them have been screwed together in the Asian nation, with the remainder being assembled in the United States with Chinese made cells. Unfortunately, not many vehicles are offered with LFP batteries in the US today. Entry-level versions of the Ford Mustang Mach-E SUV and Tesla Model 3 sedan come with one, and so does the Mercedes-Benz E Sprinter. Additionally, 2025 Rivian R1S and R1T models with the standard battery pack are LFP, as is the Rivian electric delivery van. Now, the relatively limited availability of LFP batteries in the US today will almost certainly change in the coming years. Compared to NMC, this chemistry has important upsides, including greater affordability, which is always an important consideration. Portending this growth, Wood McKenzie, an analytics firm specializing in renewables, energy, and natural resources, expects LFP to overtake NMC sometime in 2028, as the company projects lithium iron battery capacity will increase five-fold by 2030. In that time, China's manufacturing lead is expected to diminish. Currently, the country produces 90% of the world's batteries, but that could drop significantly to a still dominant 69% by the end of the decade. Setting manufacturing aside for the moment, as with most things in life, there are noteworthy benefits and disadvantages to each of these battery chemistries, and we'll dive into those after a quick word from Michelin, the folks making this episode of EV Basics possible. Eight out of 10 electric vehicle manufacturers choose Michelin tires for a reason. They're built EV ready, so you don't have to think about them. You can just enjoy the thrill of being on top, or the excitement of coming down, spending time with someone special, or maybe spending time with someone brand new. Our tires are made without compromise, so you can enjoy every moment of your journey. To find the tire that's right for your EV or other vehicle, visit michelinman.com, hit the link in the description box below, or scan the convenient on-screen QR code, and of course we thank Michelin for their support of EV Basics. Okay, so why would an automaker prefer the NMC chemistry over LFP or vice versa? Well, here's the story. NMC batteries are kind of the industry standard right now, at least in the US. They have greater energy density for more range, they can also be better in high performance applications where power output matters. And finally, the NMC chemistry often DC fast charges more quickly, 
though with those last two points, the capacity and efficiency of a vehicle's thermal management system may play a larger role than the battery chemistry itself. In comparison, LFP-based packs have plenty of their own benefits. In general, this chemistry can withstand many more DC charging cycles without failing. LFP has no problem being juiced up to 100% all the time. The risk of thermal events, aka fires, is much less with LFP. These batteries generally last longer, and they tend to be more affordable too, since they don't include expensive materials like cobalt. In particular, the ability to maintain a 100% state of charge is a huge advantage of the LFP chemistry. Or is it? Well, the Journal of the Electrochemical Society just published a study about LFP battery degradation. It's a real page turner, but it is worth addressing. Researchers did a whole bunch of testing on these batteries and actually found that frequent recharging at high states of charge, 75 to 100%, actually does the most damage, far more than at the low end of the spectrum from a 0 to 25% state of charge. According to the publication, operating LFP cells at lower average states of charge can extend their lifetime substantially in both EV and grid storage applications. Now, it's important to remember that these tests were conducted under laboratory conditions meant to mimic years of wear and tear on the batteries. Furthermore, keeping your electric vehicle at 25% or less is simply not feasible. And practically speaking, how much damage is maintaining a high state of charge really causing? Well, making things easy, I suggest you do one simple thing. Follow manufacturer recommendations. After all, they designed, engineered, and most importantly, warranty the battery pack in your EV. And what do they tell you to do? Well, Tesla and Ford both explicitly direct LFP batteries to be charged to 100% on a regular basis. We'll get to the downsides of these battery chemistries in just a second, but first, a reminder about the EV Pulse membership program. When you become a member, not only do you support independent product reviews, EV how-tos, and vehicle testing, you also get exclusive benefits. You'll enjoy perks like custom emojis and priority comment replies. Plus, you could be viewing this video before anyone else. Learn about our membership tiers and other available rewards by clicking the join link below. And of course, if you are already a member, thank you so much for your support of EV Pulse. So when it comes to downsides, NMC batteries have a few. They tend to cost more because of their difficult to source ingredients. Cobalt is hard to come by, for instance, and there are major concerns about how this particular substance is sourced. These batteries are happiest when charged to around 80% or less instead of being 100% full. For complicated reasons, the NMC chemistry is also more prone to catching on fire, which, as you might imagine, is usually bad, unless you're looking to make s'mores, and then it might actually be a good thing. As for the disadvantages of LFP, this chemistry's energy density suffers, which means you get less range, or you need a much larger and heavier pack to get the same number of drivable miles. LFP can DC fast charge slower than NMC, but again, this probably has more to do with a vehicle's thermal management system than the chemistry involved. Because of their lower cost, LFP batteries are typically the base offering, and accordingly, automakers are inclined to fit cheaper thermal management systems, which limits charging performance. And lastly, this chemistry is not as good in high-performance applications, again, because you need a larger, heavier battery to get the same amount of range. So at least for the time being, you're probably not going to see LFP packs in, say, an all-electric BMW M model or something like a Corvette EV. Again, each chemistry has advantages and disadvantages, but going forward, I think we're going to see many more EVs fitted with LFP packs because they are safer, more durable, and less costly. It's kind of surprising they aren't more popular in the US than they currently are. Now, if you're looking to get an EV in the near future, I wouldn't worry too much about what chemistry the battery has. NMC packs are plenty safe, 
They last for years and years, and of course, they have excellent energy density for improved performance and range. Other factors being equal, if a vehicle offers both chemistries, I think I would personally be inclined to go LFP because of the greater robustness and ability to always charge up to 100%, but I am pragmatic to a fault, and really, you can't go wrong either way. All of this factors heavily into whether you should still follow the so-called 80% rule. If you don't know about it, you should, so click right over here to learn more and find out if modern EVs should still follow this guideline.